So let's start with a ball rolling off of a table. And we're gonna assume that it's frictionless for right now. And this ball is going to be rolling with a velocity of, I don't know, 10 meters per second. And our table is two and a half meters tall. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really tall table. So the ball is rolling across this table. And if there's no friction, then in this situation right here, we have gravity pulling it down and we have the normal force pushing up on it. There are no forces acting on it in the horizontal. We're assuming it's already moving and it's moving then at a constant velocity. So because there's no forces going in the horizontal and the two forces in the vertical are balanced, we are all balanced forces in, in this situation. Now, this ball is going to roll across the table at this constant velocity of 10 meters per second. And then it's gonna get over here and it's going to leave the table. So there becomes a point where the ball starts to fall off of the table. And as it falls off, it's going to go in a horizontal motion and it's going to fall at the same time. So we're going to get kind of a, I don't know, something kind of like this until it actually hits the ground. So the ball, because of its velocity as it leaves the table, it's going to keep going and keep going and keep going, and at the same time it's going to fall down. And in kind of a curved pattern, that's not terribly curved, but that's okay. In this situation then, our forces change, because now we don't have this normal force pushing back up on it. The only force that we have acting on it is going to be gravity. So now, since the only force acting on that ball is gravity, it's going to be considered a projectile. So our projectile is going to go traveling off gravity, 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 um, as it moves down. Now, from our discussion of our projectile motion, we know that our horizontal motion is constant. All right, so remember that our horizontal stays constant. Okay, because there's still no forces acting in that horizontal motion. Okay, same thing over here. In that horizontal direction, there was no force acting this way, there's no force acting this way. The same thing happens here. The only force we have acting on it is gravity, and that's going to be in our vertical direction. So in our vertical, it's not constant, we're going to have an acceleration. Hmm, pin doesn't right. Okay, we're gonna have an acceleration, and that acceleration is because of the force of gravity. So as our ball falls, we can draw a motion map for this. So say we have our 10 meters per second velocity. We're going to be moving in this direction, this horizontal direction. We're still moving in this horizontal direction. Still moving, still moving, still moving. So what we get is we get the horizontal motion, the horizontal direction, the velocity and the change in position are all the same. So we can draw that motion map, we can show that that position is changing the same in the horizontal direction every second. Now in the vertical direction, we have an acceleration. And since that acceleration is due to gravity, it's going to be constant. So our vertical acceleration is gonna be the same, whatever it's going to be. Well, we know what it is going to be. Okay, so this is the same. So this green arrow represents the vertical acceleration of our ball. And it's going to be constant because gravity is going to be constant in this situation. It's not gonna change. Force of gravity is gonna be the same here as it is here, as it is here, as it is here, as it is here. So that vertical acceleration is going to be constant. Now our vertical velocity uh, is going to change because we're accelerating. So here we're going to have a small vertical velocity. Here we're going to have a little bit bigger vertical velocity. A little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. I think it's bigger. So as we go down then, our motion map changes. We are increasing velocity as we go down. 
Now, one of the things that we uh, quite possibly are going to be interested in here is going to be where does this ball land? So when it leaves the table, it leaves the table here. And it's going to land over here. This distance right here is called the horizontal range a lot of times. You'll see it called that. So if we say determine the horizontal range of the marble when it falls to the floor, uh, this is what we're talking about. How far from the edge of the table are we going to be? Now we know that our marble is moving at a constant velocity in the horizontal direction. And so when it leaves the rail at 10 meters per second, it's still traveling at 10 meters per second. Remember, we have our handy dandy little uh, kinematics equations so that we know this horizontal distance, this range, that's what this is. This is our delta x, this is our change in position in the x direction, is equal to the velocity times the time. Which is great because we want to find this and we know this, okay, so we know our horizontal velocity. It was given at 10 meters per second. Now the only thing is we don't know the time. But if you think about this, the time that it takes for the ball to travel from here to here is the same as the amount of time that it takes for the ball to travel from here to here. So the time, this is kind of an important point, the time in the x direction is equal to the time in the y direction. Those two things are the same in both dimensions. Which is kind of nice because remember these equations, we can figure that out. If we know how tall our table is and we know our acceleration due to gravity, if we start with a zero y velocity, which we do because we're moving along here, we have zero y velocity until we reach the end of the table. So our initial y velocity is zero. We can ignore that. We can use this equation to determine our time. So if we have our delta y is equal to 1 half acceleration due to gravity times t squared plus initial velocity t, which is zero because our initial vertical velocity, our initial vertical velocity is zero. So we know that the height of our table is 2.5 meters. That's one half. The acceleration because of gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and then our time squared. Okay, so we've got our calculator. We have 2.5. We're going to multiply by 2 to move this half over, because we're solving for t squared. And then we're going to have to divide by 9.8. Actually, when we divide by negative 9.8, keep in mind this is also going to be negative because we're talking about um, if we say that y equals zero right here, our delta y is actually a negative. Okay, so our final minus initial. So zero minus 2.5 is going to be negative 2.5. So that gets rid of our, our negatives, which is kind of nice. Nice and clean there. All right, so what we end up with is t squared is equal to 0 0.51 and we're going to take the square root of that. So our time is 0 0.71 seconds. So it takes our ball 0 0.01 seconds to fall 2.5 meters. Now we can come back and we can use this time because these two times are equal. We're gonna use this time, now that we know it, to find our delta x, so to find our horizontal range. So delta x is equal to our velocity, which is 10 meters per second, times our time, which is 0 0.71 seconds. And oh, it's 10 times, so our delta x is 10 times 7.1. Hope you don't need a calculator for that. So we have 7.1, our s's cancel out. We have 7.1 meters. So if our ball is traveling 10, oops, if our ball is traveling 10 meters per second along this rail, and when it leaves, if it falls 2.5 meters, 
the horizontal range is going to be 7.1 meters. It's going to travel 7.1 meters horizontally.